In this lesson, I'll teach you how to find the domain of combined functions. In previous videos, we learned that a combined function is when you have two or more functions that are added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided together. This time, we'll be combining what we learned before in addition to finding the domain of the final function. Our question reads, let f of x equal to this expression and g of x equal to this. Find f plus g, f minus g, f times g and f divided by g and find the domain for each. I believe the best way to do this is to find the domain of each individual function first and then add or subtract whatever they ask for next. So if we wanted to find the domain of this function in particular, I know that the denominator cannot equal to zero. So to find out when it does become zero, we can say x minus three does not equal to zero and solve for x. So we have x does not equal to three. So this would become zero if x were equal to three, therefore x cannot equal to three for this function. What about g? For g, we have a radical, and specifically that's a square root. Anything less than zero in the radicand will give you no real output. For this reason, we can write down four minus x must be greater or equal to zero. And solving for x, bringing that over, we get minus x must be greater or equal to negative four, and then dividing both sides by negative one flips the inequality. And we have x must be less than or equal to four. Now let's go ahead and do a. We have to add, so f plus g of x is equal to x plus two over x minus three plus the square root of four minus x. Notice that the domains of each individual function satisfies the domain for this combined function. To show these on a number line, I can write down in the middle zero. X can be four, but has to be less than four. So we'll say that that's four and everything to the left. And over here we said X cannot equal to three. I'll put a hollow circle to the left of four signifying positive three. So the final domain is that it cannot be three, but it can be everything in between three and four, and to the left of three, negative infinity, that's to the left. It can never reach negative infinity, so we use the parenthesis. That's the answer for A, let's move on to B. For B we subtract, so I'll write down F minus G the same expression as before, except the only difference is that we're using minus instead of where we had plus before. The same conditions apply to A that apply to B. So the domain will be the same for this and for that. Let's see if that's the case for C. In C, we are multiplying F and G. If we multiply them, we have X plus two over X minus three times the square root of four minus X. As before, the same condition will apply. So the domain is the same for A, B, and C. This is not the case, however, for D. Let me show you why. So for D, I'll do my work up here. We have F being X plus two over X minus three, and that's being divided by four minus X square rooted. If I rearrange this, the denominator will go up here, and essentially we have this fraction. This is interesting because unlike before, we now have a new denominator. And just to make things clear, this should be in parentheses as well. So we know that this factor cannot equal to three because we discovered that earlier. So that cannot equal to three. This part, the whole thing, cannot equal to zero, so let's solve for it. We can reverse a radical, specifically a square root by squaring both sides. If I square zero, I end up with zero again. Bringing this x over, we have four cannot equal to positive x. So now four cannot equal to positive x either. And of course, what we discovered here remains the same for the radical. Showing this on a number line, we have zero, x must be less than or equal to four is like this. 
but this time we have a new condition being that that's hollow because of what we learned right there and x cannot equal to positive 3. So our domain will be negative infinity to 3 using these rounded brackets and then from 3 to 4 rounded brackets and it is the union between these two sets. Similarly, the union between these two for questions A, B, and C. And there you have it. That is how to find combined functions and their domains.